But you're right, Sarah, this has been the most negative tape I've seen for growth equities since the end of 2018, and there was a similar setup uh, there. If we get a real conviction, confidence uh, in the rate um, of, um, of interest rate increases, then growth equities and tech stocks can work again. I don't know. That may require another Fed meeting um, uh, for that to, to for us the, the market to really gain confidence in that. So I'm going to be continue to be kind of defensive in a in a sector that really doesn't have a lot of defensive names. But I'm going to stick with the names like uh, Amazon and Google, the the two best, highest quality uh, uh, names in the in the space, and I can buy them on uh, sale. Particularly Amazon, because I think there's some wonderful fundamental catalysts for that name uh, later in the year. And then I also like what I call Venn diagram names. So those that are high quality and our clear recovery names. That's names like Expedia and, and Booking.com or Booking Holdings. That's a, it's a nerdy name for it. Mike, the, the mega cap tech names, they, they've been really hit. Right now, though, rallying. Meta is having a nice more than 4% move. Have, have investors distinguished between the defensive names that, that Mark likes, the quality names within technology and some of the other growthier places? And where, where does that stand right now? Because there's a big catch up right now. Yeah, I think Mark's up nine percent, as I mentioned. I think they have, obviously the market has made some distinctions in terms of, you know, who's outperformed on the downside more. Um, so Apple had held up pretty well. I think it's still kind of holding its own better than some of the mega cap names before. It is that kind of, you know, it's a balance sheet story. It's a stability story. Microsoft just had too good a run last year, I think, and so it had more to give back. But even at that, it's not really, uh, you know, in some kind of pronounced downtrend. So yes, there's distinctions, especially if you want to look at it against something like Meta. What I see going on today, though, is it's a, it's a bit of a, uh, a sign that investors felt underinvested going into a market that was going to be holding support, that was going to try to rally, that was going to feed off these oversold levels, and the areas that have been hard hit are getting the better benefit. It's really just the reciprocal math of hardest hit uh, getting the most upside today. So, Mark, we, and, and those are probably the ones that you want to stay away from, ultimately, you because you like the defensive names like Google, you said, and Amazon. What, what don't you like within your tech universe? Well, high multiple future growth, I'm sorry, high multiple future profit stocks are still going to be under pressure for a while. They'll have these big one day bounces in an environment like this. I, I just don't know whether the bottom has really been put in on NASDAQ. And if I look at the, you know, the range of corrections that I've witnessed over the last, you know, a couple of decades, this would be kind of a, uh, 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 this would be a relatively short correction. Uh, I could see it getting uh, steeper and I could see it lasting uh, longer. I hope that doesn't happen, but that's the, that's what history se would seem to suggest. But at some point, you know, in the next couple of months, you get a chance to get into some of these growthier names that we like, names like Roku, uh, names like Spotify, names like Shopify, too. But for now, those high multiple, especially Shopify, uh, then those high multiple future profit stocks, they're going to be um, hard to see having. We think it'll be hard to have sustainable gains, you know, the next uh, couple of months of the next year. Fine. If that's your investment horizon, I've got some great picks for you, but but not for the you, next three months. You brought up you brought it up, not me, but I was going to give you a little grief on Spotify because I know you've been pounding the table on this name and it, it just has not been where the market is right now, that, those kind of stories. Uh, you're right. It's, um, it's a company that's waiting for a gross margin catalyst. I think it's out there. I've been saying that for, the year, for a year and I haven't seen it yet, but I, I think the levers are out there and specifically as they get more advertising revenue spend by our artists and labels and as they start scaling up against all that podcast um, content that they've got on the site. To me, that's one of the best examples of a company that's under earning. Spotify's gross margins in their ads business is like 10, 11, 12 percent. There's no other Internet ad business that's got gross margins that low. That to me, they're either they're massively mis-executing or they're just extremely aggressively upfront investing in content. I think that's what's happening. So you'll see those gross margins work up and I want to be long the stock before that's clear to everybody else.